In today's Hershek episode, we are going to build a wonderful wolf reserve, as you can see. This episode, again, is going to be a bit more quiet, cozy, and uh, a little bit something to relax. So let's get started. All right, welcome back to Hirschek. Welcome back to our Europe pack uh, series. It's actually been a while since the last episode has been here and um, there are multiple reasons for that, which I'm going to explain during the episode. So stick with me if you're interested to why there was a little delay. And also if you guys are interested in what's going on in the future with my channel and with Planet Zoo, I will also briefly talk about that. Um, but first of all, thank you for tuning in. As always, I am insanely happy about the ongoing support that you guys give me um, and also the last couple months have been really really great in terms of the channel and it really gave me the the very well needed um, rest I need in the evenings uh, seeing my my YouTube channel and your comments really gets me out of the out of the insanity that real life is at the moment not because of my real life but I think because of our all real lives um, the the reality we are facing right now with everything going on from so many different angles is just ridiculous and I want to give you a bit of a a little place to escape from that and this is also why I'm um, just briefly touching that topic before we go on with this idyllic uh, little build here. Um, I'm very happy with how that turned out in the end. I can tell you it, it really was a lot of emphasis on the natural part of it and I think I really succeeded in that. Um, it really also was something almost therapeutic here. Um, not gonna lie, it really was um, listening to an audiobook. But um, you know that I have done some charity uh, in the past couple of days and um, the link for the charity I'm running is also down below in the description. So if you guys still want to help, um, you can find the link in the description. Everything you need to know about the project is listed down there so I don't need to explain that over here I just wanted to just wanted to really you know um, tell you real quick that I needed to have a little bit of a talk about that in these in these dedicated videos and the live stream just because I thought it's too important to miss out on that topic in general um, because I'm a human being I'm not a machine you know and so this is this is why I think it's still important to touch it every now and then and I also won't stop doing this in the future just for the sake of uh, keeping a, a weird facade of everything positive um, that is just not going to happen because that's not how real life is and I think uh, to really enjoy the beauty of life you have to understand um, that sometimes not everything is brilliant and positive so that is why I make this but enough of that I want to as I said give you some cozy uh, enjoying you know vibes today and so we built uh, this wonderful wolf reserve. And just to get you guys in, in case you haven't been here with the whole Hirsch Egg series, of course, you will always find the link to the playlist in the video and so on and so forth. So if you want to rewatch episode one to, I think it's episode 10 actually today. I'm not really quite sure which exactly that this is, or maybe six or seven. I don't know. But, you know, you can find all the other episodes in the playlist as always. But... I think it's very important to really give you a brief idea of what this is about. So Hirschegg is a German located um, wildlife reserve. It is not a zoo. Uh, it's very important to point out. Uh, we do have quite a lot of these parks around uh, our area here. Um, this one is especially located, or at least in our imagination, in the Black Forest, um, also in Germany. But we do also have a lot of them uh, very close to where I live in Western Germany here. Um, so we even have one that is just off uh, the outskirts of Düsseldorf. It's a very small one, a very neat one. We've been there quite often already with a small one. And we're even planning on going somewhere tomorrow. Um, some of them, some of them, um, you pay a, a very small amount uh, for entrance fee. Um, some others are free. And then there are some others where you it's not really like an entrance fee. You basically pay for the animals, for the food and stuff. Um, so you donate more or less an amount of money for the food and stuff. So uh, I think I really like this because you get to know the local animals very nicely. Sometimes they do have animals in there that are just um, partially local in, in that sense that they either have been uh, in this area previously and, and and now they are running towards extinction in this area and so they preserve them in these reserves um, or they are just on the verge of coming back as the wolf is by the way and this is why this is a great example in today's episode. Um, the wolf is coming back to Germany. Um, many reasons for why. Uh, there have been some programs in the past to bring the wolf back into some dedicated areas but the wolf, well, as it is as an animal, uh, it just doesn't stay in these 
dedicated areas because the wolf is an animal that wants to expand its territory in a way and so uh, they move out. What many people don't really know is that the wolf itself is not really dangerous to the human being in, in that sense that they would attack you or stuff. Like cougars and stuff in Yosemite, they, they are exp kind of, you know, they are dangerous. Wolves obviously can become dangerous if certain things fall into play uh, or into position. Like if you if you happen to arrive in a certain, you know, moment to them where uh, they don't feel well or they feel attacked or whatever, then it might become dangerous. But most of the times, uh, wolves are just very shy. And uh, even if you approach them carefully, they won't even attack you. Um, so the wolf is not really that big of an issue for the humans, but it is an issue for what the humans do with animals. And that is just kind of, uh, you know, farmers and stuff. And this is why the wolf is a very controversy topic in Germany. Many, many people like the fact it's coming back to Germany because it's a part of the nature, part of the ecosystem in relation to, you know, the, the right number. Uh, if they do outnumber the amount of prey, obviously it's becoming a huge issue because then obviously you, you'll see them, yeah, tackling a lot too much the farmer's animals and that is a big issue. But yeah, I don't want to tackle too much this topic, but this is why I thought it's a good idea to have this reserve in which you can have some wolves maybe in there and this reserve would be very huge. Over here on screen, you can see now one of my favorite things of today's episode. I finally found the time to build a very tiny hut for the brand new open uh, boxless counters. And this is a this is a very cool one. If you remember Yosemite Valley in our first December builds uh, back in 2019, I made a little German Christmas market and I tried my very best to use certain techniques to make, uh, you know, to make it look a lot smaller than it actually is with the boxes, but it still didn't look right. Now we can finally build a certain wooden uh, little hut that is all so often used in, uh, in markets and stuff like Christmas markets, winter markets, however you want to call them. Uh, it's so cool to have it finally. You can see I'm using, I'm using a couple of things here to make it really look nice make two different variants of it i could have gone a little more crazy internally to make even more details but i think it's fine for the moment uh, maybe i'm going to search for some more small pieces in the end to make it even look better but i really love the fact that we can finally do it that way and um, it really adds so much to the game to have to have the chance to make this even with a little door to the side it gives so much more immersion the only little tiny 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 caveat it, it, it has is that they still jump over the counter which is kind of ridiculous i wish i mean it's it doesn't really matter but i wish we could then have like a almost like a gate function as it is with the habitats itself that would be funny that would be really really funny um, not gonna lie, that would be pretty cool. I, I kind of would love to see that. Anyways, yeah, so you can see this is this is really how it uh, works with these little huts. We're going to have a look at them in the real-time part anyways, but I am a huge fan of how that turned out. It really looks cool. And I figured as we have a very nice viewing area on top of that little hill where also the watchtower is, the watchtower itself obviously is another viewing opportunity, I figured we have to have something that is a bit closer to the habitat itself or to the reserve itself. As you can tell, um, this is a reserve and that is just one side of the reserve, but this is how it actually is in these wildlife parts. So it's, it's not like in a zoo where you try to give them uh, every angle possible of the habitat to give them a perfect view of everything, like even underwater or whatnot. This is not the idea. So you want to preserve also the animal's privacy in here. So making sure that the animals feel not stressed and feel almost like in a in a real life situation and uh, they only do approach this area where human beings are when they feel like it. And so this is what we did over here. And I'm quite happy with how that turned out. I still use some of the mesh pieces here um, to prevent people from throwing too much stuff in there. It could still happen, but you know, most of these parks are, you know, they are, I don't know why people seem to behave better in these parks than in zoos. I can't really tell you to why. Maybe you guys have an idea. If you have an idea, let me know in the comments down below. I don't know. Maybe it's something psychology wise. Like, I don't know. But I have the feeling that people just behave way better in these um, wildlife parks than they do in zoos. Um, as in, they don't throw too much trash everywhere. They, they are just more quiet. Um, they tend to behave even better with the kids and stuff. And also they have a lot more respect for other people roaming around. So I just quite enjoy these parks a lot more because it seems like the animals do better. And also um, the people just behave better. I 
honestly have no real explanation for that other than my feelings. Um, but yeah, I can just assume that maybe because of if you decide to go wildlife park like that, you're not going there to see some fancy, crazy, exotic animals, but you see some animals that live in our area. And so you might be just a bit more aware of the fact that these animals um, are there to pay respect to. I don't know. It's just me guessing right now, I think. But uh, yeah, so that would be nice if that's actually the case. But you can see putting some last pieces here and there, just making sure that this habitat is also working as a habitat is. We've got the cave down here, which... Uh, yeah, should be something realistic. The habitat in itself, obviously, is um, working pretty fine. Like the, the wolves are doing absolutely fantastic in there since they have huge space, uh, everything they need to have. And yeah, just in general, kind of nice. And then just finishing off everything like with some little details here and there. And I can't wait to to finally make everything look even more overgrown and even more uh, foresty when we are done. I'm still not doing it due to the fact that I need some thumbnails that make you guys click the video. And unfortunately, you can't get people to click the video if everything is in shade. Um, there are even people that did some analytics on uh, on thumbnails in Planet Zoo and stuff, like what happens if you have too much shade in there and what happens if you take the same screenshot in the sun or in, in shadow. And it's ridiculous how much more uh, attention grabbing it is if you have things in, in the sun. I mean, it's just human, you know, bright colors, poppy colors. Uh, it's just so much easier to grab the attention of people, um, even though, you know, just talking about the beauty of it um i would always tend to use some more realistic looking thumbnails but i already said goodbye to that thing over a year ago because i know if i would go for the for the images that i love for my thumbnails no one would ever watch my videos it's just like i'm i'm a person that really likes some more more or less cinematic uh shots that that really have a feeling to it like really beautiful shots that many people would appreciate in like a photo stream or something but they are just not good as thumbnails because they don't really grab the attention of people to why they would click so yeah um as promised i will talk briefly about my channel but i'll do that in the real time part when we are done so for now i say goodbye to you as of the uh speed build voiceover Rudy and I'm jumping over to the actual in-game Rudy so enjoy your time with that one I'm out and uh, see you after the cut hello so here we are with the real-time Rudy in the real-time part and before we explore the wonderful little habitat from below there as well uh, trying to catch some of the wolves that may be roaming around in here um, and this is also the the, the vibe you know I don't want to have them always on spot you really have to stand here and look for them see if you can catch them because that's exactly how it is it is already in zoos but sometimes it's already like that in these wildlife reserves anyways now um, I promise you to briefly talk about about my channel and I will do so with this wonderful location over here maybe we are able to spot a wolf passing by every now and then but let me just take that minute or two now in the last couple of months I have been I have been pushing a lot of things on the channel trying several things to learn from it um, finding really my way of doing stuff you've seen that I changed quite a lot of my thumbnails um, I, I tried different series I tried different approaches I'm just you know just mentioning for example the diorama approach and stuff like that and I, I learned a lot of things and now I really want to try to to streamline whole thing a little bit more and to to focus on on the target of, of getting these 100k subscribers like i'm i'm saying that now for the first time ever i guess as a real target i say this sometimes in you know in the question to ask you guys if you want to subscribe or not it's like still if if anyone is out there who hasn't subscribed and uh, loves the content and you know maybe you don't even know you're not subscribed it would always be great to check and just subscribe if you can because it's for free it helps me the most it helps me tell the algorithm that you like the stuff so that's the easy part but the the reason why is I've put so, so many hours into my channel in the past six years. It's ridiculous. If I would add that together, which in fact I did for my text declaration, I was shocked. Um, and I think for me, this is somehow, this is somehow the value I want to reach to. This is, would be my personal relief in a way um, that that is the one target I want to achieve now. This is the one thing um, that would just kind of make me feel like the work paid off at the end. It is my hobby. It's not going to be my full time job uh, anytime soon and maybe even never. But I really think after all this work I put into it and after all the positive feedback, this could be something 
that I'm in, in one way um, also deserve to have, maybe if I can say so. Um, and on, on the other hand, it would actually show me that I reached the target that I set out to, to reach a couple of months ago. And now I finally really say that. So you will obviously certain things happening that I actually said in the past won't be happening. Um, I will have to adapt to what YouTube asks me to do. And oh, that's a wolf, by the way. Um, and down there, if you haven't seen that one, I think it's going to go into the cave. Um, I will even try to get my headlines and my videos a tiny bit more clicky. Um, and I would need your help uh, for that. So if you guys want to help me out, um, you can actually tell me in the comments below today in today's video, what makes you click videos? What is the one stuff why you would have watched a video from me over another video? Uh, don't get me wrong, if you want to watch another Planet Zoo video, it's totally fine, do it, because other, than what, other people do crazy stuff and they deserve, deserve your view as well. But I really would love to understand what you guys, my viewers, my, my core viewers, you know, what you would click. What is the stuff you expect from me doing that you would just click very hard at the get-go because that's what I need to do. Get people to click, to get more people in, to get new people in and then uh, have fun together doing some more community projects because that's a long-term goal. Having more people means having a bit more of a chance to do more stuff. I want to run some contests. I want to do some more community projects because honestly, at this point, even though people see the big number of 60,000 plus subscribers, the more or less active members are still so low that it's not really that easy to run a big contest or whatnot simply because not that many take part people take part and there is not really that you know community vibe going on then and so this is why i want to grow this very naturally but enough of that let's actually take a little tour and then uh, we'll see where this brings us so let's do it all right, so we went down the tower and now we are uh, down here in this area. Before we watch over to the, or we go over, watch over, good English here, Rudy. Uh, go over to the walls. Let's just have a little look to the other side. This is where the uh, deers are in and um, well, I can't even see one. They seem to be, oh, there, look at that. They're in the back and there's, I can see the antler of one. Look at that. There's one. That's so cool. Okay, now let's go over. We zoomed so close that the fence is actually very pixelated. Whatever. Um, before we go to the actual animals, let's have a little look to these shops. I love how small they appear now. Look at that. You just have that counter over here. Like, go close. There are some of the slushies in the back as well. And then you can can go here to the other one, get some Bernie Bakes. And ah, it's so cool because it's eye level. It's exactly how you expect that to be. You can stand over here. Oh, I love that. We could also put like a menu here to the side. And this has to be something that is like easy to attach look at that there's a wolf and there's another one as well i love that this is just exactly how you would have that in a, a wild Earth park let's just run over because we can maybe get a glimpse from a better angle here look at this ah oh, beautiful look at the wolves they're just standing each staring at each other playing for us look at that oh, are they fighting no that's playing look at the look at the tail wiggling that's definitely playing so cool. There's another one swimming. And this is exactly what I wanted to achieve. Look at look at the, the open wide appeal of this entire area. Like this is a real reserve. And you can you can really tell that they can go back into the forest. Like just imagine they're going back into the forest here wide into it. I mean obviously they can't, but uh, so this is in my imagination. I also did put some um you know, some things in here. And actually I thought about that. Maybe it's cool if you guys sent me some of the the plates if you want to like just if you want take some screenshots during the episode and make some and i i'm gonna pick the best ones uh, to to be made in here uh, just have you seen that jump that was like a heading into the water i've never seen that i guess but well okay um yeah if you if you want to you can just send this in via my gilded server link is in the description or you send this via mail email you can also do that find the email of the channel rudy.rencamel at google mail Dot com and then just uh, keep in mind that this is a tall format you know portrait format uh, that would be really good uh, if you want to be part of it just do it if I won't get any send in I will use myself uh, made or self-made ones but if you want to do so you can do it that's so cool look at the look at the wolf down here oh I love it it's so cool I like the wolves in the game actually a lot also like these um, seating areas like where it's protected a little bit from rain not that crazy but at least a little bit that's kind of cool as well 
There's a tiny little seating area over here. If you grab something from these two stalls, you can sit down and just like it is in these areas. It's nothing is super well maintained. You can see there's some moss, some little stuff growing here and there. It's just like something to sit down. Um, and it's also pretty realistic to use these iron things. Sometimes they have a wooden, but I, you know, I kind of don't like the wooden ones so much because they're like most likely they're super wet and uh, kind of uncomfy to sit at and mossy and stuff like that. So you would take some iron ones and yes, they might be rough at times but at least you can just clean them easily wipe wipe some water away from it and just sit down um, because maintenance would be not that big of a thing in here as well but yeah so this is it we are just going to have another view here from this area um, mostly the security is not for the wolves but the security is for the people to not jump down here because that would be that would be very uh, un unclever to jump down fall over your ankle just break it or whatever break your leg and then you can't move and then the wolves uh, meet you maybe that's not the best idea ever to have you know but this is it guys i really think this turned out really beautifully let me just go over here into the habitat real quick and show you around there's one thing i wanted to show you in particular so i'm just going to run there real quick because i did a little trick here uh which i kind of like see this lock over here and uh, they can actually traverse that lock but i used a little trick to achieve this i'm not quite sure if that is in the time lapse i'm rather certain that it wasn't yeah there you go i just put something in behind um so that you can it, it almost seems like as if they walk here, by the way, a nice little side effect is that the keeper can actually access that as well. But from over there, it looks all natural and nice. You can't even see that from the tower, but yeah. So from the looks of it, I um, have to admit that after the Lynx habitat, this might be my favorite habitat in Hirschek. Not sure what about you guys, but I really like it. I think this is a very good position to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed this, um, I hope you enjoyed this series, and please let me know in the comments down below what else you want to see, what makes you click my videos, what's what, what's the reason why you're here, that would be very helpful. And if you guys like the content and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so, helps me a lot. And now I wish all of you a wonderful weekend, and uh, yeah, stay safe. Until the next one, and goodbye.